It's wonderful to have everyone here. And we are ready for part three in our, our uh, prayer sermons. And just to kind of give you a recap, because we, we've had kind of low numbers. People have, have been gone. Well, I'm looking forward to school starting. So it's you know, it's coming back. It's been, a, it's been a short summer. But you know what? We are dealing with, uh, with prayer and talking. First, part one was about praise. And I, I really believe, just like that, Lord's Supper begins with a Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we need, we need to bring up, uh, our mind in contact with God as we pray to him. And the first thing is praise. I mean, we're giving God the praise and the glory and the honor for being who he is. And then we begin to look at who we are. And that brings me to the part two was we, we come before God in repentance. We come before God admitting that we are failures, that we are sinners, that we sin and miss the mark daily. And we can praise Jesus for not writing those sins down, for washing them by his blood. And then we can stand in absolute agreement with God because of Christ. Hard to see. Hard to understand, but we just trust in your blood, okay? And that brings us to part three, and that is essentially laying everything before God. This is sometimes our favorite. Sometimes i got to be careful because I'll start with this. You ever just start with just laying everything? It happens a lot. I mean, you know, we forget the praise. We forget that we just go to God. We just lay it all before him. And that happens a lot, doesn't it, in our prayer life? Because what happens when our needs? We need to get them met. And we know God meets them. And we know God hears us. And we know God cares. And so this is a lot of times where we start. But I don't think it should be where we start. I think it should be down the list a little bit below the praising and the repenting. But then we, we go to God, and essentially what he talks about is he, as he shows us uh, the way to pray, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. This is the, what Jesus is teaching his disciples, and he tells them exactly that. A call to pray, and no doubt praising is a part of it, no doubt repentance is a part of it, but now here's that opportunity to lay it all before God. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, lay it all before God. We don't need to go ahead and weed out what we think God cares about, what we think God doesn't care about. I just think it's a great thing to lay it all before God and let him work back, okay? Some people pray for everything. It's always interesting. Usually that's the little kids. I can remember Paul, and I don't even remember what age he was, but I'll bet he was four or five. And I, and I, would, I would listen to his prayers, and I would listen to his prayers. It's amazing what a little kid can think of to pray for. I'm tired, okay, and I'm listening to his friend. I'm thinking, hey, let's go ahead and lay this point. I mean, we're thinking of dogs and cats and my name, and you know, I mean, I'm like, okay, let's just get this thing done. So anyway, it's like, flip a coin. Who's got to listen to Paul's prayers tonight? You know, but that's the way we should do. We literally should be able to lay it all before God and let Him work it out because that's what He's doing, and He's wanting us to do that. Request. It's interesting. I want you to look at 1 Timothy 2. I like the way Paul kind of lays this out. He says, first of all, then I urge that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made in behalf of all people. Now, I think he sums it up really well. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. What does it mean? What did he mean when he said requests? Uh, some versions will say supplications, okay? Requests for, you may just say, certain needs, okay? There are certain needs for certain people. I have a big time need. I'm going to go before God and I'm going to request God this prayer, okay? It's very definite. Supplications are very, very definite, okay? We know that God has all the power. He's in control, and we're going to lay it before him. We may see a big-time need in the church, and we raise that person up before God. And this is a supplication. This is a request, because we know that God has the power to take care of that situation. And then we, we say, I urge a request, and then prayers. And I think prayers in this case is very general. It's very, very, very general. 
We, we are always, we always pray for God's rule in everything. That is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And that's what we're doing is we're, we're, we're initiating, we're, we're going before God and we're saying, we're praying these supplications, these certain people with these certain needs, and then we turn in prayer, we're going to give him a general of what's going on. Now, I always want you to remember this, you know, God already knows before we tell him, right? <laughs> we're not telling him anything that he doesn't already know, but he just wants us to line up with his will, okay? Very gentle. I need God's rule in my life. When I pray, when I pray this prayer, I'm just, I'm just laying everything before and saying, God, I want your rule in my life. And then there's the intercession, okay? The third part of that, that prayer is pleading in the interest of others. Now, I like the scripture here in, in 725 because Jesus gives us that picture. It says, therefore, he is able once and forever. This is Jesus to save those who have come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. That's what intercession is. We're interceding to God on the behalf of someone else. That's what intercession means. We pray that a lot for people. Parents, you find yourself praying a lot for your kids, don't you? Bozos, why aren't they lining up with what we think they ought to be doing? That's just the way we are as parents, right? We know it all and they don't know anything. But we're interceding for children. We're interceding for friends. We're interceding for kings. We're interceding for we're just anybody. And this is the idea. And what I want us to see is that there's, there's supplication, there's prayers, there's intercession. We're covering it all, okay? And that's what Paul says to Timothy. He's giving it, he's saying, I'm getting it all covered for you. And then he says, I want you to have thanksgiving. Now, this fourth part of, of, of these prayers that Paul is telling Timothy about, is, now, thanksgiving sometimes is a hard one to add with those. Because in the midst of prayer, a lot of times, like when I'm praying, sometimes it gets intense. Okay? Because there's some intense things happening, right? And we're explaining to God our situation or the situation of these people that we think ought to be lining up with God's will and we have that all figured out and we're laying before God. And sometimes what we do is we forget the thanksgiving. We forget to be thankful. I, I, I look at Colossians 3 and, and uh, it says... And left the peace of the Messiah to which you are also called in one body, control your hearts. He says, be thankful. Listen, we are to be thankful in prayer. To me, it may want, you may want to start with that. God, I am thankful that you're hearing my prayer, and I'm thankful you're answering my prayer according to your will and not to mine. And I'm very thankful. And some of us can just stop there for a second and think of all the unanswered prayers we had. And they were not answered. They were just not answered the way we thought they did. But God answers everything. Let God know as he answers our prayers that we are thankful. Devote yourselves, Colossians says, to prayer. Now, like this, he says, stay alert in it with thanksgiving. Have you ever been praying along and you're, you're just engaged in this awesome prayer? And it's somewhere along the line a squirrel ran by your window and you left your prayer after the squirrel. Does that happen to anybody? Okay, it happens. We don't have a squirrel. Or an adult. Or something. And what I'm trying to say is your prayer got derailed because you're trying to hold my hand. Does that ever happen to anybody? Does that make more sense? Your prayer got derailed or something. Listen, this is, I think this is important. Watchful or stay alert. It's, 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 it's sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes we're going to be so on our plate that the world's on our plate and God's on our plate. We come into prayer and we get this prayer started good and then all of a sudden the squirrel runs by the window and we're off in never, never land. Forget why we're even praying. Oh, you got to get back in tune. It's very important, I think. 
And this is why it's very, it's hard for me to pray with a whole bunch of people around. It's easier, just as Jesus says, to go to the room and shut the door. Find that place. Find that spot. Everybody's got it. Somewhere. Some place that you can go and shut the door. It may be in a car. It may be in a pasture. It may be in a room. It may be somewhere. But find it because it's going to be important. Because the scripture said, I want you to stay alert. I want you to be watchful. I want you, as you devote yourselves in prayer, line it up with thanksgiving and go to God and give me everything you've got. God's ruling in your life and we need to understand that. And then I think this is so important. Because sometimes what happens is, and I know you're human just like me, sometimes we go, God, are you willing to listen? God, do you really care what I care about? God, are you going to listen to me and really care for me the way that I think you need to? Now, I think it's interesting. Jesus gives us this parable. And I think it's a great parable as we pray to understand God wants us to be persistent. Okay? One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. He says, there was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow in that city came to him repeatedly, saying, give me justice, in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. Now, what man hasn't said that before? All right. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Well, hey, this is one of the greatest examples of the way we should pray. Then the Lord said, Lord, a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people? You are them, okay? Who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Lord, or but when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have found that? I, I think of this, and I, I always think of the scripture. You don't have because you don't ask. And this persistence, I think, is so important in prayer. It's not a one time, it's not a two time, it's an every day. Mind that goes to God and lays all these supplications, these prayers, this intercession before Him and says, God, I want you to work. I want God's rule in my life. Now, I want to look at a couple wonderful examples of this. One of them is David, and this is after his fall, okay? He says, God will call upon the Lord, and the Lord will rescue me. M let me look closely morning, noon, and night. David is an engaged prayer. If you want to say that we are to pray continually, this is a good example of that. It's always a mindset of, of my God is there every second of the day. He says, I will cry out in my distress. You see the persistence here. And the Lord hears my voice. We saw what he did with David. We saw what he did with David's sin. We saw how he dealt with David. We see the remarkable turnaround in David. Listen, God heard David's prayers, and God answered David's prayers. Another great example would be Daniel. Daniel, who, who now is up there in age. In fact, I, I just talked about how old Daniel probably was when he was thrown in the lion's den. Maybe 80. You know, so he said, we, we think of Daniel being a young lad thrown in the lion's den. Daniel was an old man thrown in the lion's den, okay? But there was a decree that the guy tossed into that lion. You know what it was? Stop praying, Christians. Stop doing that. Don't go to your God in prayer. And so Daniel's got the challenge in his life. And what does he do? Look close. Verse 10 says, But when Daniel learned the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room 
with its windows open toward Jerusalem. And he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done giving thanks. A stand. Daniel knew that no matter what the decree was, that no matter what was happening in life, prayer was the most important thing. Listen, it is your lifeline. Christians will not exist without it. You cannot continue to be in a relationship with God and end communication. It doesn't work that way. Paul said, be watchful, alert, in mind. Listen to what Jesus said. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The Spirit is willing. That's what Jesus told his disciples as, as they were in the garden. <laughs> there as he went into the garden of Gethsemane. Listen, watch and pray so you are not falling to temptation. This is part of our prayer. God, help us to not only pray but to, to watch because temptation is all around us. It's so easily, it's so easily entering into my mind if I allow it. It will enter into my mind if I allow it. That's what temptation is. And you know what's funny is Satan knows how to do that better than anyone. The tempest. Ephesians 6, 18 says it this way. Paul says, I pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, he says, be alert. That's the watchful. And always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Peter says, but in the end of all things, but the end of all things is at, at hand, he says, therefore be Serious and watchful in your prayers. There is a seriousness in our prayers that we need to have. There's a watchfulness in our prayers that we need to have. We don't want to get caught unprepared. Prayer needs to be very planned. And we need to be planned so we can be prepared. And then scripture says this, we need to be thankful. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and it says, and thank him for all he has done. Now, I put this in, in, in this prayer, in this idea of this, this supplication, in this prayer, in this, this intercession, and he says, here's what I want you to do before you start praying. Don't worry about it. I like the verse that says, don't, don't be anxious about anything. You know what that word means in the Greek? It means pulled in different directions. Have you ever been pulled in different directions? Hope pulls us in one direction. Fear slides us into the other. Now, let me ask you a question. Has that ever happened in your prayer life? I'm going to tell you one thing. I can be very anxious in my prayer life. And God's saying, don't do that. What it's going to do is going to pull you in two different directions. Here's your hope. Here's your fear. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to understand that word worry means strangle. God is not the God of anxiety. God is not the God of worry. That is Satan. God is the opposite of that. Worry or anxiety will be a joy killer and it will kill your breath. Okay? I like this scripture in 1 Peter that says it this way. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God at the right time, at the right time, at the right time, at the right time. You ever have that record set? You can have to go to the time. But sometimes it sticks in the right spot. And I think we need to at the right time. What? At the right time. No, no. At the right time. In God's time. In God's time. This is a very difficult prayer. Because I'm such a patient person. Very difficult prayer. God, it's in your time, not in my time. It's a seal with God. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Throw all that anxiety on him because he cares about you. Stay alert. There's a watchful. Thank you, Peter. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
And then he says, that's stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings you are. I love this. And I have to remind myself of this scripture. When I'm suffering, sometimes I think I'm the only one suffering. Have you ever felt that way? God said, you're not alone. There's a plethora of people suffering. This, this is the beautiful thing about it. Prayer gives us that opportunity to be a suffering soul, to be an incomplete soul, but go before God and just throw everything we got upon Him. I like what Jesus says. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and I will find, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That is always in my mind when I have that anxiety and I'm going to God in prayer. I'm thinking, what do I got to do with it? He says, cast your cares on him. I sometimes, before I can pray, there just has to be an unloading of burdens at the foot of Jesus. Sometimes we run into a person or a thing in our life that we can't handle. That happens. Let me tell you, we're human, remember. We just gotta take the Or take the And just unload. Because I, I, I'm tired of allowing them or that situation to cause me great anxiety. And I know that you told me that 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 I could, when I'm weary and burdened. And a heavy lady, you're going to give me rest. So I'm going to be willing to dump this on you, Jesus. Listen, that's what prayer is. It's a one month. Just sit for a second. Just think about that for a second. We get that opportunity to just unload it all at the foot of Jesus. You don't have to call your neighbor. Why is you don't have to hammer your husband on this? Or vice versa. His life to be Jesus. What a wonderful thing. All of a sudden, Jesus says, I'm going to take care of every problem. Listen, God has the answers. We don't. This is, this is what humble is, okay? If you walk into God in the prayer room and you go, I got the answers, God, you don't. I'm not sure humility, I'm not sure humility is there and it's present. Okay? I got the answers, God. Here's the way I think it should be done. Here's what I know. Here's what I'm pretty sure you don't know. And so here's how you need to answer this prayer. That is not called you know. That is not called humble. That is not called laying it before the foot of Jesus. Listen, God has the answers we know. And then I love the scripture because I know that God is going to do immeasurably more than all I ask or imagine. And then he says, according to that Holy Spirit, according to his power that has worked within us, so in other words, God gave us his Holy Spirit. It's at work in us. And I know that he's going to do immeasurably more than I ask or imagine. But it's going to be according to his will and not mine. Okay? 1 John 5, 14 through 15. If you get one scripture out of this sermon, please get this one. Okay? Please get this one. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything, now stop right there in the middle of the sentence, because you're going to get, you're going to need to get these next four words John uses. You understand the question? According is will. According to According to I got the confidence. I go before God and ask Him anything according to His will. I am going to tell you, I lived years, years without giving that much thought. And my prayer life was one of them. And as I consider that now, my prayer life's changed. My prayers have changed. What I pray for has changed. You want to know why? Go back to my kingdom come 
Thy will be done on me. On me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on me. God's rule has begun to reign in my life, and therefore my mind has changed. I all of a sudden move from a physical person to, to wanting everything physically and materially to saying that's no longer important. I, I, I care about the spiritual. That changes my prayer. If I don't see always the physical, if I only see the spiritual, does that change your prayer? Does it? If you're looking at the spiritual side and you're looking at the physical side, what do you think is going to be the difference? It's going to be a huge difference. Let me give you an example here in a second. A big one. There's going to be a huge difference. If I look at the physical side or the spiritual side, my prayer isn't even going to be the same. People, and it should as we live for Jesus, as Jesus' rule begins in our life and continues to manifest and continues to grow, all of a sudden my prayer life changes. It changes. Because we're like that little child. But something happens. Something gets all messed up from the child to, to, to an 18 year old, from, from 18 to who knows what? Some people are slow learning. I would say, you know, it becomes very physical. It becomes very material. And you know, our prayers are very lined up with what we want, what we've got to have. All of a sudden, you're living a long life, and something just click, it changes. And you're like, that just doesn't matter to me. Does anybody have that? I just doesn't matter to me. I mean, honestly, burn it all. Huh. There, 20, 30 years ago, I was sorting through this barn of all these things that I thought were pretty important. They were called treasures. Okay. A lot of people look at it and say they call them clutter. Okay. I call it treasure. So many years later, I go to the same barn. And it's really easy to let some of those treasures go. In other words, not sold, but thrown into the dust. Because they're just not that important. You understand what I'm saying? This is what this is God's rule. All of a sudden, it's not about the physical. It's not about me. It's not about necessarily my health or, or my wealth. It's about being a kingdom person. And that's what God wants to for us to understand. Because we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We need to listen closely. We need to embrace God's view. Not our view. I mean, we're down here and we're looking. God has completely view of and group. Which view are you going to embrace? Okay, let's get back to that. Got a little lock, chase her out of there. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him because we ask according to his will. God didn't answer that prayer. Oh, maybe he did. But you just didn't like the outcome. Okay. I told you I was going to give you an example. None greater than this one. None greater than you. This is yeah, none greater than Jesus. None greater than Jesus to give us an example of when we say, God, I want your will, not mine. Let me tell you what, in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was a moment when Jesus said, if there's any other way, Remove the crucifixion from me. Let's go to that scripture. Then Jesus went to his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and, began, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Okay. It says, Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray that so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is 
not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it. May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. The picture is Christ said another prayer. That's the thing. If there's another one. I didn't say anyone. If there's another one. Did you notice that? If there's another way. If there's another way to save mankind, I know what that crucifixion is going to be like. I don't know. That's what Jesus said. But it's not about you. Even Jesus said that. It's about you. It's about your will. And so what does Jesus do? Are we glad he went to the cross? I want to close with the scripture that says, Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude. Because whoever suffers in the body is done to sin. As a result, they will not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. Jesus lived this life in full submission to the Father for Father's will, not necessarily good. You and I, as we engage in one of the greatest things we can ever engage in, and that's called prayer, we need to understand that. We need to embrace that. We need to embrace it as God's view, and there's our view, and they're not the same view, and the Father's view is always right. There's a show saying possible. God knows. Listen, when his will is true, will, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've got to go through the struggle. I'm sorry. But I know one thing. God's working. Just like he says in Peter. Sometimes we suffer. And we suffer greatly. And you know what now I look at? When I suffer greatly, you know what I look at now? He's making me in the life. Let's go to God, we're thankful for prayer. We're thankful that, that you can use them. We're thankful that we, we have that ability to approach you being sinners and you being totally righteous because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We know that it's because of the blood of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ sits at your right hand and intercedes for us. And we're thankful that he understands us and knows what we're going through each and every day. God, our prayer needs to be for everything, but most importantly, it needs to be that your will will be done. Never our will, but always yours. Because we know it's your will. So we pray this day.